Water is obviously essential for survival. Yet, in a disaster or SHTF scenario, access to clean drinking water can become a critical challenge. But I've noticed in the daily quiz questions I ask that there are still a lot of people who don't understand the limitations to various types of water purification methods. Contaminated water can carry harmful bacteria, parasites, and chemicals, making it obviously unsafe to consume. So we're going to take a look at the various methods to purify water to ensure it's safe to drink, also the pros and cons of each method, and some ways to gather water when traditional sources are unavailable. Water purification tablets. Water purification tablets or drops are compact and reliable for disinfecting water. They work quickly to neutralize harmful microorganisms, making them pretty good for emergencies. These tablets are effective at killing microorganisms like bacteria, viruses, and parasites, but they don't remove physical contaminants like dirt or chemical pollutants like pesticides, heavy metals, or chlorine. As always, follow the instructions of the packaging for correct dosage and contact time. Water filters. Portable water filters are an effective way to remove bacteria, protozoa, and other contaminants. High-quality filters are even designed to handle untreated water from streams, lakes, or other natural sources. These filters are a must-have for bug-out bags or emergency kits, as we all know. Water filters remove physical contaminants and microorganisms, but they might not eliminate viruses or chemical pollutants, depending on the filter's design and quality. Boiling water. Boiling water is one of the simplest and most effective methods to kill bacteria, virus, and parasites. To purify the water, just bring it to a rolling boil for at least five minutes. The government says one minute, but I say five minutes at least. While boiling does not remove chemicals or heavy metals, it ensures that the water is safe from biological contaminants. Solar disinfection, or SOTIS, uses the sun's ultraviolet rays to kill microorganisms. You just place clear bottles of water in direct sunlight for at least six hours. This method is energy efficient and useful in sunny environments, but doesn't address chemical contaminants. DIY filtration. You can create a basic filtration system using cloth, sand, gravel, or coffee filters to remove larger particles from water. However, this method is only a preliminary step and should be combined with boiling, chemical treatment, or other purification methods to ensure safety. Chemical disinfection. Unscented household bleach can disinfect water effectively. You add roughly 8 drops of bleach per gallon of water, stir well, and let it sit for 30 minutes before you drink it. Bleach effectively kills microorganisms, but it does not remove chemical pollutants, physical debris, or improve the taste of the water. And also be mindful of bleach's shelf life because it loses potency over time. UV water purifiers. Handheld UV devices use ultraviolet light to neutralize bacteria, viruses, and protozoa in water. UV water purifiers effectively kill organ uh, microorganisms, but they don't remove chemical pollutants or physical debris, and they require clear water and a power source to function. For extra safety, safety, combine it with another purification method like boiling. Distillation. Distillation involves heating water to produce steam and then collecting and condensing the vapor into a clean container. The process removes bacteria, viruses, heavy metals, and many chemicals. The downside is that it is time-consuming and it produces only a small amount of purified water at a time, making it less practical for large-scale needs. And additionally, it may not remove volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, or chemicals with a boiling point that's lower than water, like some pesticides or solvents, unless additional filtration is used. And though it requires time and equipment, distillation is one of the most thorough ways to purify water. Reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis systems work by pushing water through a special membrane to remove contaminants, including bacteria, viruses, heavy metals, and chemicals. But they do waste water in the process by flushing out impurities. Older models wasted three to four gallons for every gallon of clean water. But newer portable versions are much more efficient, with some only wasting one gallon. 
So a one-to-one system. These systems are highly effective, but they still need pressure or power to work. These systems were also traditionally very expensive to install in homes, but now there are many affordable, portable models on the market. But even this method isn't 100%. Reverse osmosis doesn't remove certain smaller chemical molecules like some VOCs, chlorine, or some herbicides unless paired with pre- or post-carbon filters. Ways to gather water. In emergencies, gathering water is just as important as purifying it, and here are several ways to collect water when conventional supplies are unavailable. Stored water. Of course, you always should have a supply of bottled water or store water in clean food-grade containers and rotate that stored water regularly to maintain freshness. Aim for at least one gallon of water per person per day for a minimum of three days and with a goal of 10 to 14 days or longer for long-term preparedness. Collecting ice and snow. In colder climates, like right now, uh, ice and snow can be valuable water sources. Melt and boil it to ensure safety before drinking. Try not to ever eat raw snow as it can lower body temperature and it may be contaminated. Local water sources. Rivers, streams, lakes, and ponds are natural water sources. While these can provide a steady supply, they often contain bacteria, parasites, and pollutants. So you always got to purify the water from these sources using at least one of the methods discussed above. Swimming pool water. Pool water can be used as a last resort. It contains a lot of chemicals, including chlorine, that inhibit bacterial growth, and these chemicals are not safe for long-term consumption. So I did a video a while back on the steps you need to take to make pool water as safe as possible to drink, and I will put the link for that video in the description. So having access to clean water is critical for survival in any emergency, obviously, and while each purification purification method has its strengths, no single method removes all impurities. Even distillation and reverse osmosis leave trace elements behind. So to ensure your water is as safe as possible, use a combination of methods to address both the biological and the chemical contaminants. Your best bet is to test out several of these options in advance, see which ones work best for your needs, and ensure you are prepared for any situation. Because remember, staying hydrated and healthy can make all the difference in a disaster scenario.